Oh, mama! Raid must be short of cash this week. Damn, we have got a 10 times summon like no other. What is going on? How you doing? I'm Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Uh, firstly, before we get into the actual video, Raid have got, literally it's probably be for about an hour before I uh, record, a crazy value compared to what they normally do pack. Um, I feel like they need some money this month. The fusion didn't quite cut it for the earnings. And now they're like, what else can we do? What else can we do to make some cash? And then the new guy was like, uh, I've got some champions people might actually want for a 10 times. Very clever, new guy. Very clever. So the theme is actually stun champions. Uh, stunning champions, you might say. Let's get into it. Who have we got? Let's start with the epics. Whoo, we got some crazy ones going on. So first one up. I actually don't have him on my main. Um, and decent champ. So Fodbor the Bard, one of the best champs for the Dwarf faction, actually. He's definitely in the epics. Triple hit, heal reduction, finite tick. Um, we got the stun ability here on his A2, which is okay. 100% um, if you book him, chance of stealing two random buffs. It's pretty cool. And he puts a stun out in its place. It's not bad. His actually main use case is his A3, it, which books down to four turn cooldown. 100% chance to land decreased defense. The dwarf action don't have much going on in that area. So, you know, but I guess you probably could have got Herndig more recently. And therefore, he would be less valuable to you. But good, good starter. Um, Next one up is pretty cool. Looks sweet. Love the look of this guy. Um, with his kind of like mini bookcase of skulls on his arm, of course. And his giant pear wrapped in paper around his crutch. Um, but other than that, nice flowing locks. Buren Giri, um, A1 with a chance to provoke. Actually a reasonable chance to provoke. You know, it's not bad for like a magma dragon type um, affair. A2, this is where it gets juicy. AoE, 60% chance to stun if you book him. All of his damage is based on defense. I love that. Uh, this is kind of like a Seal of the Drakes or Fushan type move. Yeah, we love these AoE stuns. It's very rare in epics to get this ability. So this is nice. Um, A3 is good as well. Strengthen, shields. Um, the shield is equal to 15% of the target's max HP. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Four turn cooldown. To strengthen, basically the best buff in the game. You straight up reduce the damage you're going to take 25%. And then the shield on people that are going low. That's the only thing I don't love. It's a situational shield um, based on people that are going to drop. Often if you've already got yourself below half health, you're in trouble. Um, but still, it's a nice ability. And then a passive here. Heals this champion by 50% of their max HP whenever an ally or enemy dies. That's pretty cool. Again, it's a shame the passive doesn't kind of blend over in some way to allies as well. But it's, it's quite a unique passive to keep him alive. Decent enough aura. Buren Giri, solid a champ. I really wish they'd up his speed by like another 5. 93 base speed for an epic is a bit low. Um, let's move on then. This is a beast of a champion. Armina, Barbarians. Another champion that's got the AoE drop defense on her A2. Also a bit of turn meter control. But she's in here. She's in this group for the stunnage. Decreases turn meter by 20%. Love it. And then there's a chance to stun if the turn meter drops to zero. Uh, it's a little bit, again, situational chance to stun. But it's quite a nice um, piece of kit. Stun on array one as well. Uh, and then a passive that fills turn meter whenever there's stuns out there. You can actually, like, if you're throwing her in with any of these other champions we're talking about today, turn meter is just flowing. Because there's stuns going off all over the place. Put her with... A helmet put her with a seal. Turn meter is flowing uh, through. So she is a solid, solid epic. Well worth investing in, for sure. Um, next one up. Kind of underrated champion, I'd say. It's the void of the mix in the epics. Two hack the wanderer. Hits like a truck on his A2. People don't realize it. Smacks people hard. This could be your arena nuka if you've got him for this ability. Similar level of damage to... Um, like a fully kitted out skull crown, bit less, but not much less than a skull crown. Um, double hit on a eight on it is a one. Uh, each hit chance to drop. Um, sorry, increase cooldown of skills. This is okay for 
Iragoth, actually. It's not a bad ability. You could turn all other skills off and just get him constantly A1 in that, um, that Drake or the Dragon. Increase the cooldown of the target skills by one instead if they've got, uh, if this champion's less than half health. AoE also drops speed and puts increased speed on, um, on this champion. Heals by percentage of damage as well. It's not bad. And then you've got the stun chance here on the A3. Uh, it's actually one of the few champions that could stun someone for two turns. And stun is the best debuff in the game. Like To land it for two turns is nasty. So this is cool. It's a shame, again, it's single target. That's why he doesn't really get a lot of playtime, I guess. Also steals turn meter. Like there's, there's a lot going on with this guy. Pretty cool passive as well. Decrease the damage he takes by 20% if his HP drops below 60. But again, it's kind of situational. He's a bit squishy. It's unlikely that's going to kick in and really help you that often. Um, got a, an aura as well, not bad. So that's the epics. Let's get on to the legendaries. Some great, great legendaries in here. Just got my Urost done through Clan v Clan. Um, so the first of the legendaries then is Nephril. Again, like, I don't suppose he's underrated, but he's not talked about that much. This guy is a beast, like an absolute beast of a legendary. All of his kit is great, and he can be played almost anywhere in the game. So triple hit poison. He's got one of the highest poison outputs in the game for clan boss, if you just run him A1. Turn all the other skills off, A1 all the time. The poison bar is filling up. 50% uh, chance to land it, and he hits three times. Pretty nuts. A2, AoE, this is where his stun comes in. 75% chance to land a stun if you book him. This is cool for the arena. It's cool for general wave content. Um, and if he doesn't place a stun, don't worry. You've got decreased speed going out there anyway. It's really cool, actually. Um, and then the A3 attacks all enemies. 100%, as long as you've got enough accuracy and it's not a weak hit. 100%, he's going to decrease the turn meter by 75%. This is huge, like AoE turn meter drop, 4 turn cooldown if you book it, it's actually massive. With the stun and AoE together, you've got two complete lockout abilities going side by side for most content. He can help you, he'll carry you through most content where you're going through waves. Also very cool for Spider. So Nephril, very very good uh, champion. I just, I mentioned this guy a minute ago, but he is a beast. Uh, what is he, what is he? He's, no, he's not there. Lizards, Fushan. Again, I feel like he's underrated. This guy smacks. He's a really hard hitter. He's got some cool mechanics as well. So he can get extra hits on his A1. Uh, I've seen him do like four hits. I've seen him do about four hits with this A1. Um, he's got double hit on his A2. So that's nice against someone like a Rotus in the arena. Um, but also each hit chance to stun. 35% chance to stun if you book it. Basically, the exact same stun chance as Seal with the Drakes. Yeah, he's like the attack version of Seal, um, with perhaps a little bit less in his kit. He's got decreased defense, four hitter. So I don't. This is what I don't love. It's like a random spread, but it's still solid. You know, seventy-five percent chance to land it. Three turn cooldown. Um, he could be like a secondary decreased defense champion in your team, or he could be your decreased defense champion in a clan boss setup. I've seen him run in a lot of unkillable teams where he's pumping out silly damage. Like, silly, silly numbers. Um, and he's got a speed in all battles aura as well. 24%. That's massive. That's a massive aura as well. Great base speed. Great base stats. Really, really good legendary champion. Um, so I'm going to go into the Void next. We're going to end on the, the big one. So yeah, so the Void is soulless. I don't have this guy... I mean, his screaming shield is like, wow, what's going on? Um, this dude actually is the hardest hitting defense-based champion in the game. This AoE here is the hardest hitting. It's the best defensive nuke ability that you can get. Um, unless someone new's come in that I don't know about. So Solus, he recently got a, a fairly decent buff as well. But his stun comes from his A1. Okay chance to land it. Well, 50%. It's actually pretty decent if you book it. Um, Triple hit at random. Again, I don't love that at random word, but 100% chance to remove a buff each hit uh, and places provoked if a buff's taken off. So this is good for wave control, that type of thing. Honestly, for a void legendary, this one is a bit underwhelming. This should just be an AoE for me. I think it should just be an AoE, 100% chance to remove a buff. And if you remove a buff, you place provoke. 
That's what, should, that's what it should be for me. Um, but this is the nuke then. A3 attacks all enemies. Increases the duration of all debuffs on each target by a turn. Kind of nice. Um, so if they've got the decreased defense and decreased attack and stuff on them, he springs it to go for an extra turn. Then places provoked on all enemies for one turn. It's nice. Uh, places shield on himself equal to percentage of the damage and he hits hard. Damage increases by 10% for each debuff on the target. That's how it scales to be one of the hardest hits in the game for a defense-based champion. If you just throw it out there when there's no debuffs out there, it's going to be a, a reasonable tickle. But if you've got three or four debuffs out there, maybe you throw in a Rishtoff first, all the poisons go out, you get a Madame, does a decreased defense, decreased attack, there's five debuffs, 50% more damage. It's literally like you take your damage number, you times it by 1.5. That's how it works. That's the coding. Simple as that. It's a nuke. So this is nice. Um, defense in Faction Crypt is okay. Good base stats. Solus is a beast. Um, so let's get on to the, the main event. Ding, ding. Who have we been waiting for? I got her fairly recently. It's actually, it was a while ago now, but it was the most exciting day in my raid life. I actually love, when I type Hell Hades Trunder, I love these thumbnails. <laughs> She's ready. Never look her in the eyes. Time to dream. Time to dream. It looks like I like that. Um, I like that saying. Anyway, anyway, this is the actual one. Finally, she's mine. Let's watch my reaction. There's another gold. What we got? What have we got? <laughs> We've got Trunda. Luck juice. <laughs> Come on. Finally. Finally got Trunda. Oh, this is big. This is big. This is literally like the one pull for non-voids that can change my account. Trunda. Damn, Trunda. I mean, it just brings back memories now. Brings back those good old memories. Um, they've done it 10 times on a once before, and I pulled everything I had. I used all my gems up and failed that time. But I've got her since then. Trunda is the best damage dealer in the game. Forget all of those silly thumbnails. Trunda's dead. Rip Trunda. No. No, no, no. Trunda is still queen of the game. She still hits harder than anyone else. There are a few other champions now that come and start to try and try and take her for the throne. But they're not doing it yet. Um, she does need to be the best in the game. She needs an increased attack buff. She would like to see decreased defense on the enemy. However, I do see her doing that same work without those things going on. And she still sits down a whole wave of enemies um, or the whole arena enemy team. In fact, I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, what she got? AoE, chance to stun. So this is, this is where her kit's a bit funky, actually. You do need to understand it. If you build her with accuracy, she's a great spider champion. She can stun, and then if she stuns, she places HP burn. If you build her with no accuracy, which is what you should do, then she hits twice, and both hits are absolute cannons. Okay? And um, so what she got here is uh, 70% chance to stun. You don't want that to land. Places an extra hit on enemies not under stun. That's it. If you book her, you times the damage by 1.3. And it's a lot. 30% more damage is a lot. Worth the books. The A2 is coded extremely weird. So she attacks one enemy. Then attacks all other enemies with a second hit. Dealing 60% of the damage inflicted from the first hit. You're like, what? So if she hits for 100k, she's going to hit everyone else for 60k? No, that's not the way it works. So the funky thing about this A2, and it is extremely unique. Firstly, when you hit, you've then got an AoE hit after. But it's not an AoE hit. It's four individual hits. Which means that if someone's wearing something like stalwart gear, it doesn't protect them at all from the AoE. So firstly, that coding is just a bit wrong. And it means that everyone just gets laid out. Like if you've got a Duchess who's got her passive that's got the AoE protection passive built in, and let's say they're all in stalwart, it's as if none of them are in, uh, got any protection at all. That's how nuts it is. The second thing is when she hits with her first hit, you want to go for a high HP target. She hits and she crits, and it will do a lot of damage. And then the second hit crits again. And what that means is it takes your first hit, the 60%, and 
and then it multiplies that by your crit damage again. It's a coding error, I think, because it shouldn't do that, but it makes your A2 almost as powerful, if, if not more powerful, than your A3. Valerium. So, look, I mean, there are people now out there that are, are strong. You know, the new Lion um, is strong. If he's low health, he can compete with Trunda's damage. Magnar, if you're not running increased attack and um, you're trying to, like, compare Magnar versus Trunda, it's close. Yeah, so if you're not running an increased attack like an Arbiter or Draw Grab or someone, then Magnar's actually a hard hitter. But Trunda is still the easiest setup damage dealer in the game. And she's got two absolute cannons. She does have a passive as well, to be honest, which is not bad. Uh, and she does have an A1 stun, uh, which is not bad if you run her in like Accuracy Deer. She's got attacking all battles and silly numbers. She's a silly champion. Let's see her in action. So here's my Trunda. 6k attack, 242 crit damage, as low as accuracy as I can get, to be honest. Um, I don't even have her in, like, amazing gear anymore. I've kind of moved some gear around, but she is in Savage, and that's the most important thing. Savage plus Cruel would mean you probably don't even need a drop defense before she goes. She hits that hard. Um, but let me show you her in action. And let, let me show you why I was so pleased to get trunda um now what am i going to do here nothing too much to worry about damn and if i run an increased attack champion yeah what's that take okay. she works fully on auto look against uh, attack based champions like this you can literally just throw out the drop defense land to the a3 both hits smack for 100k. Slam dunk. How you feeling, fellas? Not so good. And down they go. And if you're going up against a, a defensive team, let's see if we've got one around. Uh, someone with high HP like, um, like Mountain King here. You can actually use a A2, which depending on how much um, HP the enemy have got, it just hits harder and harder. Now, we are negative affinity, so I might get a weak hit. We'll see. But the higher the HP, the more work we do. Um, let's just hit someone that's been woken up. So, A2 on the high HP champion. Don't weak hit. I did weak hit. It weak hit, and it still exploded everyone else. Let me see if I can rerun it. It weak hit, and it exploded everybody else to death. Actually insane. Um, Let's just get it going again. Come on. For the video, don't weak hit two in a row. Don't do it two in a row. Don't you dare do it two in a row. Don't you dare. 148k. Smacks everyone else into smithereens. Trunda's a beast. Forget how much you love these champions sometimes. Look, um, it's an interesting temple. They clearly need some money. Good luck if you're going to pull shards for this event. Um, I always say, like, I mean, I'm not going to pull them on my free-to-play. I've already got her on my main. If I didn't have her on my main, I would pull shards for this event. But that's because I'm like an endgame player who's looking for specific champions. So I'm not saying you should, but it would be a cheeky one if you get her. I've been Hell Hades. I will see you later.